Max. Hey, how you doing? Good. Thanks for having me here. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, so everybody gets asked the same three questions. Sure. Fire away. The first question I have for you is, how long have you lived in Salem? Uh, I got to think about that for a moment. Uh, about 29 years, 29, 30 years. Had a, had a guess, I had to go by my oldest daughter's age <laughs> and then add a couple to it. So it was that all in one shot or have you kind of want come in and out? Over uh, the years? Well, I grew up in North Andover okay. uh, and uh, I went to uh, college uh, first in Portland, Oregon and then in Boston. Um, and I knew I wanted to live around here. Uh, and Salem was a place we'd done day trips to. Yeah. Um, and uh, honestly, it was at that point in time, it was still really quite affordable to live here uh-huh. uh, and it was one of the only places on the North Shore I, I could afford to live with that we could find a place and we found a condo here uh, and started there um, and just have stayed here ever since I, I raised both my kids here well, that's one extreme to the other from Portland to yeah yeah to, you, well, you, you like the two top corners <laughs> like. I, when I was in Portland that was that's pretty much the only place I've ever lived besides Massachusetts yeah um, although I was I was born in Missouri but we were only there for like six months so I don't really remember yeah, it. yeah I'm the same way, um, yeah. but I spent uh, I spent my whole life in Massachusetts except for three years in Portland Oregon when I was at Reed College and I went to Reed and I could not cut it there. There was absolutely no possibility of my graduating. <laughs> uh, and I transferred to Emerson, which is taken very seriously now. But at that point, it was like if you huh. could pay, you could go. Sure. Yeah. Um, so it was, it was I kind of did the two extremes. Yeah. I, did, I did a place where I felt like I'd been allowed in there on a special uh, quota for idiots. <laughs> uh, and then a place where I was uh, one of the smartest people there. And it was kind of a weird combination. So... If someone saw you walking down the street, how would they know your face? Uh, they would say, hey, that's that guy. Well, one of the things they would say is that's that dude that walks all over Salem all yeah. the time. <laughs> um, I, we, we have one car, and I've, I've always been on foot. My wife commutes uh, back and forth to Lowell. Um, and I love walking, and I walk all over town, and I am, I'm, I'm really in the zone when I'm walking, and uh, I frequently hear people say, yeah, I saw you out walking. I yelled, I honked, yeah. uh, I didn't get your attention at all. Yeah. Um, and uh, part of that's because I'm deaf in one ear, and part of it is because I'm just thinking when I'm walking. Sure. Uh, and also, I have terrible posture, so I'm that guy with terrible posture <laughs> who you always see walking around Salem. You're the second person I've talked to that criticized their own posture. <laughs> a lot of people are so hung up about their posture. That's so funny. Uh, so I knew you initially because we were neighbors. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then from Salt and Stall. Yep. Then I found out that you worked at Harrison's yep. by wandering in here one day. I'm yep. like, no, oh, it's the guy from Salt and Stall. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. And then the more I dug, the more I found out that you're a uh, writer and I mean I would even say you're a comedian were you ever actually a, I was um, a stand up comedian I did, at any point? I did a little stand up I didn't do much stand up but what I did was um, I, I worked as I went to acting school yeah. and then I worked in comedy straight out of acting school like literally like I went and did an acting job for the summer I came back I auditioned for an improv troupe and I got in mm. um, and uh, so I did uh, I was in an improv group I was in a sketch comedy group and I coached comedians uh, all throughout the comedy boom in the 80s and that was a huge source of income for me. Okay. I did not do much stand-up because stand-up is brutal. Yeah. Um, I'm super good at working on other people's technique. I am not that good at doing it myself. Interesting. Um, okay. But a lot of, I mean, my what I brought to the table was most stand-up comedians don't come out of acting. And they, you know, they're funny people or they're writers yeah. and they have no acting background whatsoever. And boy, can a stand-up comedian benefit from some acting skills. Interesting. Um, a lot of them go into it thinking, but I'm not acting. I'm just being me. And yeah. that's crap. Of course you're not. Yeah. Um, because yeah. if you're just being you, you won't hold the audience's attention no matter how funny you are in private. Huh. It's, it's all about presentation. So I had... Uh, I had about 25 clients, uh, and that was as much a source of income for me as uh, as any of the uh, uh, the two well the two groups I was in. I was in uh, an improv group, and we performed all the time. Um, and then I was in a sketch comedy group, and we performed when we put shows together. And there was overlap between the two, mm-hmm. but it wasn't all the same people. Hmm. Did you work with anybody who's notable now? Um. Not super notable. Uh, one of the people who I was in Guilty Children with is uh, the head writer of the show Shameless. So that's pretty oh, big. No kidding. That's cool. Um, uh, Cindy Freeman, who was in a bunch of comedy groups with me, is really well known in the storytelling circuit. 
I knew a ton of people who are really famous comics now because yeah. you know in the eighties like. There were clubs all over town, and it was they had great professional courtesy. If you worked in the field, you could go to any club anytime. Yeah. So I was in clubs f- four to five nights a week for years, uh, mm. and everybody famous from Boston in the '80s I must have seen hundreds of times. Sure, sure. Um, uh, would they know me? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. And my clients, I the only client I had who was anywhere near that big, I, I coached Jimmy Tingle once. Uh-huh. I coached Wendy Liebman once. Hmm. And in both cases, I was like, you're not going to benefit from me. Yeah. You're already there. I can't, I'm not going to tone up your performance. And, you know, it would have been cool to continue working with them. Sure. But they didn't need a coach. Yeah. And, you know. I was like, people hire coaches because they need coaches. Right, right, um, right. Some of them have gone on to some pretty good writing gigs, but you wouldn't know them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You could have coached Jimmy Tingle in his uh, run for governor, maybe. I, definitely what I will <laughs> say about him that, that I have to say this is what, like, what to me means that he could certainly be a politician is uh, I worked with him once. I met him like three times. Every time I've ever seen him, he instantly knows exactly who I am. No kidding. I mean, I haven't seen him in 20 years. And if I run into him, he's like, oh, Max, how are you doing? Isn't How's your funny? kids? Yeah. What's yeah. it like living in Salem? Oh, there you go. <laughs> Born politician. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So uh, speaking of Salem, the third question I ask people is, what are you doing uh, What are you doing right now to make Salem a better place? Other than distributing all the colorful joy you have behind you. Yeah, I mean... W- Part of it is this store, because Harrison's is, Salem is so lucky to have Harrison's. I've been interested in comics my entire life, and I'm really interested in the history of comics, as well as just, like, buying comics, and I love the whole thing. I love love the the fantastic literary contributions it can make at the one end Mm -hmm. to the complete soap opera crap at the other end. (laughs) I love the entire medium for different reasons, but I love the whole thing. And I've been to uh, shops all up and down the East Coast, and this is the best. Mm. And I, I definitely felt that way well before I started working here. Um, and I think you know it's just pure luck that Salem has it because this has nothing to do with Salem history. It yeah. has nothing to do with the witch trials. It yeah. has nothing to do with witchcraft. It's purely its own thing in Salem. And for Salem to be lucky enough to have all the stuff it already has plus the best comic shop that I've ever been in yeah. is pretty amazing. Um, so I definitely feel like, you know, that I get to work at a real Salem jam. How'd you end up here? Uh, I've known Larry since he opened the store. Yeah. Uh, I used to buy my comics at Red Lion before he opened up, um, before Larry opened up. Yeah. And for a while, like, I would come in and look. And, and Larry's shop started really small. He was uh, a little bit over that way, and he split space with his dad, and his dad sold odd lots. Um, so huh. it was very, very small. Um, but he'd done, like, shows and, and flea markets and stuff out of the back of his van. Um, he was very knowledgeable and had this phenomenal collection. And then when – this was a Cherry Web Terrain. was a women's clothing store. When they went out of business and he moved in here and could fill this whole space, wow. um, it, instantly it was, like, this incredible place. Yeah. And I stuck shopping at Redline for a little while out of loyalty because uh, I knew the woman who did the comics there. But, like, this place was – Incredible. I mean, yeah. Red Lion was, was great, and with no other comic shop in town, it was fantastic. It had a lot of comics and a lot of other weird crap, and it had kind of this very seedy vibe to it that I really enjoyed. Yeah. Um, but this is the best comic shop there is. And so pretty soon I was here, uh, and I came here a lot, and then uh, um, I'd worked for the Museum of Science for 16 years, and they had a big restructuring, and huh. I lost my job there. Then I worked for Salem Academy briefly teaching theater, and then they decided that they wanted to shift money from teaching theater to teaching more health, teaching like an extra session of health instead of any theater, which hmm. kind of bummed me out. Um, and I was in here one day, and Larry says, hey, how's it going? And, you know, you always respond to that, oh, just fine, we're doing great. Sure. And for some reason, I was completely honest, and I said, it's going really badly. I've been <laughs> unemployed for a really long time. I don't know what I'm going to do. And Larry said, well, you could work here. <laughs> wow, that's excellent. So Larry rescued me. Uh, it wasn't my fault. Hey, Larry. <laughs> 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 but yeah, it was, you know, it was just one day. You know, it was yeah. just one day. And I, I was at the back wall looking at comics, and I happened to be completely honest and say things really suck. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. When I first moved here, I did that kind of wander around downtown, not really knowing where I'm going. Yep. And I wandered into 
Red Lion before they redid yep. it. And I'm like, this place is bizarre. Yeah, yeah. You know, and I didn't think I wandered out the back door by accident. I don't even remember. Um, but it, what, you know, what registered was, you know, there were models and there were some magazines and there was another room that I yep. wasn't interested in going. And then I wandered in here. And in my head, I conflated the two. I put yeah. stuck the two yeah, together, yeah. and I'm like, yeah. "Wait, what did I see?" And yeah. then I came back here one day, and I'm like, and back down the street, and I'm like, "Oh, it actually is a gigantic, you know, yeah. Yeah. comic book store that I walked into that was totally unexpected." Yeah, yeah. So, and, I, and I have an appreciation for. I've never been like a big comics guy, but as a kid, there was a place in my hometown called Dave's Comics, and. You know, we'd walk into Dave's Comics yeah, and, you yeah. know, kind of paw at everything and never spend any money, yeah, you know. Yeah. But it's the, there's a part of my childhood that, like, I walk in here and I'm like, I feel like I'm, you know, 12 again. Yeah, you know? yeah. And, and I mean, we have the, the biggest selection of back issues I've ever seen in a, in mm. a physical location. Mm-hmm. I mean, online you can find bigger warehouses, but I've never seen, I mean, tens of thousands, literally tens of thousands of back issues uh, going back to the 40s. Yeah. And that's pretty amazing. Wow. Um, and and just to be surrounded by all of this stuff yeah. is, uh, I love it. And, you know, people come in here, you know, we have a lot of very casual clientele who are just buying the new stuff that's coming out. But mm-hmm. we have people coming in here who, whose interests are like mine, or like the, the breadth of the history of, of comics as an art form. Yeah. Um, and they're looking for help. And, and I joke with my wife about it. It's like I have this huge amount of what in any other circumstance is useful and somewhat irritating knowledge. <laughs> and here, it's the opposite. Profoundly you know, useful. In, in here, it is expertise. Yeah. Out there, it's irritation. <laughs> yeah, I love it. That's a great way to put it. It's yeah. expertise yeah. within yeah. these four walls. Yeah, exactly. Excellent. Exactly. Uh, I have one more question that sure. applies solely to you. Uh, when I've talked to a couple of different people, one of the people I'm talking to is Max Burbank, and they go, is that his real name? <laughs> I'm it gonna, sounds like a stage name. I'm going to tell you a huge secret. And, okay. Well, it's not so much a secret because I don't mind admitting to anyone. It is not my real name. But it's too perfect. It might as well be my real name because I've had it for so long. I yeah. don't remember being called my real anything name. else. Yeah. My given legal name is Matthew Burbank. Uh, oh, that's not that I big was, a difference. Well, it, it, it's it's still Matt, like I Max. don't like the rhythm of it very yeah, much. I get you. Um, uh, when I was two years old, the book Where the Wild Things. Art came out, yeah. which was my absolute favorite book. And at two, I looked like I had posed for the pictures in that book. <laughs> I can see it. And that was like instantly my family started calling me Max and that went that to other people. And I tried briefly to escape it just to see if I could. Sure. Uh, I, I went to summer camp and I didn't tell anyone that that was what people called me. I said, you know, my name's Matthew. You can call me Matt, whatever. Um, and somehow it leaked. One person heard it, and like within days, nobody called me anything else. Yeah. So it's not my real name, but it might as well be. Might as well be, yeah. 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 I lived with a pseudonym for about 15 years, so I, I, know, <laughs> I, know, I know how it is. <laughs> Depending on who I run into, they call me different things. Yeah, it, it, uh, it's a great stage name. It has never helped me in any way at all. So <laughs> never, never got me a job, even once. Thanks, Max. You betcha. I won't call you Matt. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, I got that a lot too. That's right. No, I got that when I was growing up because of laughing. Oh, beautiful, um, beautiful downtown, downtown Burbank. Burbank, and that was definitely like that was the bane of my existence when I was in grade oh, school because I'm absolutely I'm absolutely old enough. Like that was yeah. the big show on TV totally. when I was in first through sixth grade. Uh, exactly, exactly. So that was the big joke. Yeah.